I grew up um, Catholic, raised Christian Catholic, and I always had an idea of Jesus from the way from from the first stories I ever heard. Even up until now, what usually comes up is he's the magic man. He's the guy who can walk on water. He can heal people. He can do tricks and different things that people can't do because he's God. That's you know the story. Um, I'm not sure what you've heard, but I want to share with you the Essenes Gospel of Peace because this is a book that was supposed to be given to people, or actually not given, hidden, <laughs> that was from the um, Dead Sea Scrolls, the writings of the Dead Sea Scrolls found in the early, early 20th century. And reading it, Jesus isn't magic. He's not someone who does tricks or does anything, but he is somebody who teaches quite a bit. And in fact, what he teaches is, he's almost like a health practitioner. I mean, he talks about sp the spiritual side of healing, but he really talks about the body. That's why I want to share the story with you today, because I want to answer those little questions. Um, just came off my fast, feeling really good, and I thought I'd share this with you. So stay tuned. There have been changes going on in my life, and I knew that these changes were here, and during some of these changes, I started doing some cleaning. It eventually got to the point where I thought, you know what, I can do some cleaning in my body, and why don't I just do a fast? You know, I know that autophagy, if you haven't seen my videos on fast, they're like right here, one side or the other, I'm not sure. But if you haven't seen my videos on fast, they are really effective, they're really good. I explain autophagy in them, and um, what the man, you know, discovered with his Nobel Prize winning discovery about how our cells dump off a bunch of trash, you know, except when they fast after a certain point because out of, um, I'm not sure, I can't remember, like emergency or the body's protecting itself in some way, so it starts dumping the trash right away. That's what autophagy is. That's what you can get within about 18 hours, 20, 20 hours of not eating. That process begins. So I wanted to do it and I did it and it's a challenge every time. I mean, the first night I hung out and that's that's when it starts kicking in. I go the whole day without eating and it's not until dinner time where I'm like, okay, this this is, I wanna eat, it's time to eat. And I don't, and I know that I'm gonna go to sleep without eating, but I do it, I go through it. And what helps me get through it, of course, as I've talked about it in my fast videos, is I take the, um, the um, uh, Master Cleanse drink. It's a lemon, maple syrup, and a little dash of cayenne pepper. I take that, that satisfies me. I still consider that okay throughout my fast, uh, you know, however long I do it. And this last time, I fell upon the Essenes Gospel of Peace, which I have not read for about maybe six years, seven years. Now, the little backstory on this is that, you know, I used to do fasts. I've been doing it for about 15 years now. And when I used to do these fasts, I, you know, did it not for any spiritual reasons or anything like that. I just did you know what I thought what I was doing what was right or that might help me and then one year um, when I was going through a parasite cleanse I found um, on one of the sites of information I was finding the Essenes Gospel of Peace and I decided to read it and I read it at a time when I was in deep suffering you know really heavy suffering and it was the coolest thing ever because it was completely different from what I've ever learned and I want to tell you right now that I'm not trying to get you to join Catholicism Christianity Buddhism you know, Islam, any kind of stuff like that. This is just a story. So I'm trying to explain to you the story because the story is actually really cool. I really, really dig it. It's a lot of fun. Um, the Gospels that in the Bible that we read nowadays, you know, that the churches go by and everything, they, they usually start with Jesus' lineage. They start with his birth, the virgin birth from um, Mother Mary. And, um, you know, the story evolves with the manger and, you know, King Herod trying to... That's where it starts. In the Essenes Gospel of Peace, book one, and this is the one I'm going to be referring to as book one, it starts with men who are completely sick and aren't feeling well, and they're saying, please, don't leave us behind. We are, like, I mean, yes, we are horrible, I guess, you know, but is there any way that we can be saved? And Jesus simply says, yes, you can. You can, because you're finding the truth. I'll try to give you the truth. And the truth is, is that once you let in the um, earthly angels and your earthly mother and you realize that she's inside of you, then Satan and all the darkness and sickness will run out and you'll be okay. And the man said, what? What are these angels you talk about and who's this mother earth? What, what, what is this? How do we get this? 
that's a crazy beginning. That's like the first couple of paragraphs, I guess. You know, I, and when I read that, I was really intrigued. I thought it would sounded like a story that I'd never heard before. And that's why I want to share it with you because it's something fun to read. And they're very similar. There's some similarities to Buddhism and the Eightfold Path in some way. And to me, in my brain, the way I see it, that is supposed to be, have come from these untouched documents, you know, that were very, you know, they were hidden away for thousands of years. And now this information is given to us. It's a completely different Jesus. Maybe there's some secrets in it. Maybe there's something that might be able to help out. And I found that while I was on my fast that I really loved the stories. They, they make me so happy. I want to share with you a couple of them. So I'm going to share with you the beginning about Mother Earth. So what I'm reading right now is um, from book one. And I'm going to read after that story I just explained where Jesus explains, Your mother is in you and you in her. She bore you. She gives you life. He goes on to say, the blood which runs in us is, the, is born of the blood of our earthly mother. And then he discusses the clouds, the rain, the streams, the water. That is the blood of earthly mother. The air which you breathe is born of the breath of earthly mother. And he talks about the heavens, the mountaintops, the wind through the forests. Um, he explains, the hardness of our bones is born of the bones of our earthly mother of the rocks and of the stones and he talks about the strength of your body through your bones the tenderness of our flesh is born of the flesh of earthly mother whose flesh waxes yellow and red of the fruit of the trees and nurtures us in the furrows of the fields the light of our eyes the hearing of our ears born of the colors and the sounds of earthly mother i love it it's poetic right i mean it's it's really cool talking about how we have this connection, whether you acknowledge it or not, to Mother Earth. And it's the moments that we separate ourselves from this connection, from the lives that we live as human beings, not as like sinners and all that stuff, but just as human, human beings, that we lose touch with Earthly Mother and with health and with security. So... Let me read to you about that because he discusses and explains Satan. Now he's going to talk about the bad guys. And here's how he discusses Satan. For I tell you truly, evil and dangers innumerable lie in the weight of sons of men. The prince of all devils, the source of every evil, lies in wait in the bodies of all men. He is death, the lord of every plague. And taking upon him a pleasing raiment, he tempts and entices the sons of men. Riches does he promise, and power, splendid palaces, gold and silver. Okay, then he goes forward to say, And in the day that the sons of men have already become the slaves of all of these vanities and abominations, then in payment thereof he snatches from the sons of men all of those th good things which the earthly mother gave them so abundantly. He takes from them their breath, their blood, their bone, their flesh, their bowels, their eyes, and their ears. Pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of, you gotta imagine, okay? I was reading this while I was on a fast, and he equates Satan um, to being in your body somehow, whether it's our soul or whatever it is, you know, how we are, you know, susceptible to darkness, evil, unhealthiness, if you just want to say that. And he talks about, and he associates it with Satan, which I thought, this is where people can get kind of frustrated with it because it sounds kind of scary and it sounds kind of weird. But to me, while I'm going through a fast, this is kind of the stuff that comes up. Not necessarily Satan, but the bad that I've done to my body. The bad that we all do to our bodies. You know, I mean, that's what life is about. When you come here as a child, you know, I mean, of course, we also do take on from our parents and from what we've learned from them and even their DNA, you know, their faults that they have. And that's what I know that I've done. And in cleaning and doing things that are the spiritual path in a way too, which is like fasting, I heal myself. So he explains how the mother is alive in you. And that if you clean yourself, you can do this. You can clean yourself and you can get away, push away the darkness. 
So um, he says the mother's alive, alive in you. He tells these men to follow the law. And they said, well, we follow the scriptures of Moses and all these things, and it doesn't seem to help. And he said, no, I'm talking about the law of life. That's what I'm talking about, about what you see, about the earth. That's where I understand where um, the church, <laughs> you know, the structure of religion, the superstructure of religion and church um, could be upset because he's not. he says, I'm not talking about scriptures that people follow. I'm talking about life, the law of life. And not too long after that, he explains about how, he, he tells them how to clean their body. And one of the first ways he does it was he explains cleaning your bowels, getting water and putting it up <laughs> through your rear and cleaning out your colon. He prescribes a colonic. That's what I read in the story and I was kind of amazed by it. Now, I have a history with that, an accident. I took um, antibiotics and I asked the woman after, I said, I never take antibiotics. What am I supposed to do? What should I expect? And she said, oh, nothing. You might get hives. That's about it. She never told me about probiotics. She just described, you know, prescribed antibiotics. I didn't have probiotics in my, in my diet. So after six months, my colon was completely toxified. I talk about this in a video. I'll share that with you up there so I don't have to go over it here. But I was completely depressed, just completely sick. And it wasn't until I had to have an emergency colonic that it was like brand new day. So this part of the story, when I read it, I already gone through this and I understood it felt like hope all of a sudden from going through this. And that's something that I, I like I said, this is the reason why I'm sharing this Gospel of the Essenes is because I feel in some ways that I know this firsthand and I want to share it with people who might be suffering and might be thinking about different things and might be hesitant and might not want to get a colonic or do a... I'm not sure, like a coffee enema or a celery juice or different things. They're supposed to be cleaning your body, especially when it involves, you know, cleaning your bowels. Um, I want to share this with you so it's not taboo, so it's not something to be afraid of. And the story goes on and Jesus explains about how the angels of air, water, and sun, angel of air, angel of water, and angel of sun, that they are like brothers and that when you call upon them and then when they enter your body, it's like the homeowner who comes home and the, the crooks who are trying to raid the house go running, that he can clean you and save you. I really like that because um, I know that you ask for angel of air to give you the breath of life, angel of water to give you the waters of life, and angel of the sun to give you the fires of life. And I not only practice that and put it in my prayer sometimes, but this is also something I've been doing through the summer by going swimming with my kids and being out and about, I really feel like I've been doing this. Um, that's something I wanted to be able to share because there are many great things in this story. Um, I never fasted, like I said, for religion before this, really. I now read this as almost like a spiritual routine or I plan on making it a spiritual routine um, because this last time reading it, I thought every time I fast, I think I'm going to open this up because I really love the stories and I want to share them. Later on, he gives the Our Father and it's the prayer that um, in the Bible, the New American Bible, um, that's the one prayer where people say like, hey, Jesus, how do we pray to our fathers? We don't know how to do it. And he said, well, this is what you say, our Father who art in heaven. And in this story, he does. He gives the Our Father, but he also gives the Our Mother prayer, which I still say. Um, I don't, I haven't gone over the Gospel of the Essenes um, very often, which I guess I plan on doing now, but I've been saying the Our Mother for years now. And um, one of the last things I want to share with you is at the end, he talks about the prodigal son. The prodigal son was the one who, um, there are two sons and the father. And the father is the master, the Lord. He owns everything and he gives them their, their inheritance and says, go do with what you want. One stays home, is a good boy. The other one goes off and adventures and does all these really bad things. Comes back with nothing and says, father, I have nothing. I'm sorry. Please take me back at least to work for you. I'll be a slave to you. I'll do whatever. The father takes him back, throws a party, does everything. The good son says, what the heck? I've been here the whole time and you never threw a party for me. What's all this about? He said, listen, that's my son was lost and now he is found. 
he has a reason to re that is a reason to rejoice and to be happy. And we're supposed to be the lost sons and children of God that when we return to him after our, our you know, party days or defilements, whatever you want to call them, um, we're always welcome back. And in this story, he talks about it. And I want to share that with you right now, real quick. So Jesus gives the parable of the prodigal son. It's a little bit different in this one, though. He talks about how the son is reckless. The father gives him everything, gives him nothing but love, and the son just does what he wants, spends what he wants, and the father realizes, you know what? I don't think he's going to know love in his life, and that's a very, very, very important thing. He's not going to know because I pay all of his debts. He's running up everything, and I just keep paying it. I'm going to stop paying his debts and um, have him pay for himself. So the boy goes running around, doing everything he wants, grows older, spends money, parties, does whatever the heck he wants. And then finally one day the debtor comes and says, you owe me. And he says, yeah, my father's going to take care of it. He said, no, no, no. Your father stopped paying a while ago. And the son goes into slavery. It's discussed and explained about how he suffers greatly. Seven years of parting, seven years of slavery. Hard labor, suffering. And then he prays and prays and prays until... The father decides, I will give, let you out early with these silver coins and I will pay the debt to your debtor and I will release you. And from that point forward, the son appreciates everything his father gives him. He then, you know, runs the fields, runs everything and he has laborers under him, but he treats them with kindness because he knows what it was like to do hard labor. And he becomes a better man for it. Not only just becomes becoming better, but he also learns that everything that his father has is now his. And he's much more responsible. Now, this is Jesus' explanation of the story, saying that he speaks in parables. I speak to you in parables that you may better understand God's word. The seven years of eating and drinking and of riotous living are the sins of the past. The wicked creditor is Satan. The debts are diseases. The heavy labor is pain. The prodigal son, he is yourselves. The payment of the debts is the casting from you of devils and disease and the healing of your body. The bag of silver received from the father is the liberating power of the angels. The father is God. The father's possessions are earth and heaven. The servants of the Father are the angels, and the Father's field is the world. That's, I love the story. Like I said, maybe by now, if you've stuck around this long into the um, this vlog, that maybe you understand why I'm sharing this with you today. You don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be Catholic to like this. Um, it's a great story, and I think it, I truly believe that this is something that I experience on every fast. On every fast, I have to come face to face with what I put in my body and what I'm trying to cleanse out of me. And I hope and pray that it'll allow me to make changes, which it has, because I've come become much more accustomed to eating natural foods. Um, I stopped drinking at a certain point in my life, which is something I thought was impossible. I'd never be able to do, but I did. And it's mostly because cleansing myself allowed me to realize that... Um, I don't want to suffer and that some of these things, my body's older now, can't really do what it used to do. Um, something's not paying off the debts. I'm having to do it through pain and suffering. Now I want to finish with talking about is this story even real? Because there is talk about that on the internet saying like this is kind of, you know, it sounds like a pretty crazy story. Some guy supposedly found these hidden records in the Vatican and decided to um, sneak them away somehow and then or steal them and then write a book I mean it sounds like you know national treasure or something like that um, and it doesn't sound like Jesus like I said I mean as someone who's completely Catholic and Christian and le learned those stories all my life it doesn't sound I mean it sounds like Jesus in a way but it doesn't sound like the Jesus we're taught about who is much more magical in the modern Bible and there are people who believe this might be a conspiracy in some way um, I 
love it. I think it's another awesome teaching that I can use. It's something that I believe that I live and that I experience. And I think that we all experience some sort of way or another. Um, not only does my body change after this, but usually I feel a lot lighter and I have a lot more joy and energy after a fast. That's the reason why I do them. Um, I'm guessing the reason why a lot of people really don't like to listen to it is because it's actually difficult. Um, what's discussed in this, this what is discussed in this, in this, um, it seems gospel of peace is very similar to Buddha's teachings. Um, he has the Eightfold Path, and if you've ever read some of it, even just a bit, you just realize, like, man, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. To get to enlightenment is kind of tough, right? Yes, it is. And in fact, Buddhists actually cheat quite a bit too. They will eat meat, but they will say, because I didn't make the kill, then I am not breaking the laws of the Buddha. You're still eating meat. I mean, <laughs> I think that's what's defiling your body no matter what. I'm, that's opinion. I'm not saying that I'm vegetarian or anything like that. But that's what the teaching is supposed to be. He's like, get the teaching. Come on, what's it really about? But people bend because they don't want to hear about the things that might be needed to heal them. So I believe in these teachings. I like it, even though it might be difficult. Uh, it makes me feel not alone when I'm going through my fast and I'm kind of scared or I'm kind of, you know, hungry and I want to give up. It makes me feel that I can call on angels to help. Um, it gives me... Um, the idea that my good health and reminder that the good health that I choose is actually helping me throughout my life on a daily basis. I understand that it's a difficult regimen. Like I said, it's just like the Eightfold Path of the Buddha. It's similar in some ways, but I also don't follow the Eightfold Path. I don't follow the Gospel of the Essenes, um, you know, word for word either. Um, I like medical medium because I think he has a gift that he's able to give nowadays, and I don't follow his regimens either. Um, and I don't have guilt for it that much either. I learned to rid myself of that because we're human, right? I mean, we are part of our own suffering, yes. And we are part of our own learning also. And any step closer to the light and away from the darkness is a very good day. And that means just doing, you know, one little fast here and there is a step closer to the light that I'm going to do that. Or maybe even sharing a vlog about um, the Essenes Gospel of Peace. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you like it. I hope that you would give it a chance and just read it. Like I said, it's not something like begging you to, you know, join a religion or asking for money. But you can look it up online. I'll try to put a link down below for, for one that's free that you can read online. And um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you can um, so I can keep on making these videos. And uh, I wish you peace. The scenes, gospel of peace.